Hey friends, Mike Adams here with the Unsunday Show and the Grace Cafe podcast. I want to give you a quick health update, but before I get there, I want to let you know that I was asked to be a guest on the Grace at Last podcast with Corrine Kinsler. And so I'll have a link to that below in the description of this episode. But I was really excited to be able to have a conversation with Corrine again, and our topic this time concerned women in the church. So again, if you want to go listen to that interview, I'll have a link to it below in the description. But for now, what you're about to hear is a conversation that my wife Susan and I had concerning my cancer diagnosis that I recently received. This is a health update of yours truly. And this is going out on both the Un Sunday Show and the Grace Cafe podcast. So give it a listen. And thank you so much for following along with both the Un Sunday Show and the Grace Cafe podcast. Here's that conversation. You're listening to the Un Sunday Show. Leaving behind religious obligation for a better expression of Christ. This is the On Sunday Show. Hello, friends. Mike Adams here with the Grace Cafe Podcast. And I'm Susan. <laughs> I almost forgot again. <laughs> what was my name? <laughs> hey, thank you for joining us on another riveting episode here of the Grace Cafe Podcast. Sorry, we've been absent for a while. But in this episode, we're going to update you as to why we've been absent and why we may continue to be kind of hit and miss with our podcast in the near, in the foreseeable future, in the near future. But uh, let's talk about what's been going on with us. And what's been going on with us is some health issues with me. Specifically, I was diagnosed in April with cancer and I was diagnosed with bladder cancer to be more specific. Aggressive. Yes, a very aggressive kind. It, it came on fast. The um, symptoms symptoms started kind of mildly, I, I guess, in late January, early February. And then they kicked up a notch sometime late February into March. And at times got pretty ugly and pretty scary. And then by the time April rolled around, things were looking pretty bleak. and the fatigue that I was experiencing was really incredible, which I had every desire to continue to podcast, but I just, the fatigue was nailing me. And then, like I said, in April, I was diagnosed with cancer after some testing. And uh, May 2nd, I had surgery to remove part of that cancer, to scrape it out, as it were, which wasn't real pleasant, <laughs> but it's better than having it in there. And so today, we're looking at uh, starting some chemotherapy and going down that road and possibly another surgery or two along the way. So right now, the, the uh, prognosis isn't completely bleak. It is, it's, going to be, it's going to get more intense for us before it gets better. But uh, we're still here, and I just wanted to update you on that and let you know what's going on. And so do you have anything you want to add to that or any context you want to put around that? Oh, it's just been scary. And, uh, the, you know, the waiting, like we have more tests coming up that they have to schedule. So there's another wait time for that. That's it's really difficult. But through this, I was thinking about it um, last night. We both had have had a lot of sleepless nights. And I was thinking about, how I have to ward off and fight thoughts of who God is during this time. And I really think that's really the dangerous part of coming out of some of the harsh doctrine that we believed is you're taught a wrong view of God in such a way that the first reaction, it's hard to get rid of that first reaction of, What's he going to try and teach us through this? Or, you know, what's he doing to us now? And what did we do to, you know, why is he doing this? And just always reminding myself of who he really is. And I just, I think that grieves my heart the most, is thinking about what people are being taught 
Sunday after Sunday after Sunday about who God is, and and He isn't that. Yeah, yeah, that's been the hard part for me too. You know, it's just having been in that environment for so many years, yeah. and I mean, really in it. Yeah, to where it was really drilled into you. Yeah, and you actually, you know, we actually embraced it and thought, well, this is this is true. I'm so glad. One of the things that I'm really thankful for is that this happened after having come out of that and after having spent years with a better understanding of grace and a better understanding of who God is and how all this works out. You know, in that old environment, people would have been asking us, well, what do you think God's teaching you? Yeah. What a ridiculous question. Yeah. That's not the God I know. That's not the God I serve. He's not trying to teach me anything. He's he's too busy loving me. Or not having anybody say, oh, you better check your attitude. Yeah, exactly. You seem a little edgy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Sorry, there's some history on that one. You know, just um, you need to choose joy. You need to do this. You need to do that. Instead of resting in the love and caring and adoration of God for us. Right. Exactly. You can't do that there. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is no rest there. There's no rest in that environment. You can't let your shoulders down. It's always, like you said, it's always me-centered. It's always, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, what's God trying to teach you? How come you're such a knucklehead? You know, maybe you're not, maybe you're not reading enough. You know, maybe you're not practicing hospitality. Maybe you're not doing this or doing that right. All of that is off the table for me. I mean, this is this is real. This is where the rubber meets the road. And in the real world, Jesus loves me and gave himself for me. That's the real world. And that's made a big difference with me. I mean, there's, there's times when I've been really scared. You know, some of the uh, symptoms that have come along have been pretty brutal. And there's been times when I've been really scared. And it's in those times that the Holy Spirit has impressed upon me that Christ in me is more than a theological construct. He's real. In other words, what I'm going through, Jesus is going through with me in a very literal way. And he's there. He's with me. He's given me comfort. He's given me peace. And not to say that there aren't times of no peace and of discomfort, because there certainly are, but overall, I don't have to fall back on my performance. And for that, I'm so thankful. Because had that happened earlier, had this happened, you know, 10 years ago, who knows how I would have responded. Well, those are the things that caused both of us, not at the same time, but in different things happening in our lives, to question, am I even a believer? Yes. Because so much was dependent on us. Yep. And you know, cuz it wasn't finished. Yeah. In our minds. And it is finished. It was it was finished on paper. Yeah. But not in the real world. Right. Not in reality. There's 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 this element of that that is up to you and I to hold together. And we're supposed to finish what he started. You know, that's a bunch of bunk. Yeah, I'm I'm just really thankful that all of this took place now as opposed to years ago before we understood, not that we've arrived or plateaued or anything like that, but when we came into a better understanding of grace and where where we are with our understanding of grace today is even different than it was two years ago. Yeah. You know, so it's been a, uh, it's been a scary road at times. It's been a very tiring road. I can't, I can't remember the last time I've slept more than an hour and a half or two hours at a time. And you know, just some of the fatigue, but we saw the oncologist again today, our second appointment with him, and things are starting to roll. And I have a little bit more testing to have done, but um, we're starting treatment probably next week. Yeah, the, because of the holiday, he's going to try to squeeze us in. Yeah, hopefully that happens. He's been pretty good about that in the past. So that's the plan right now. If you want to reach out to us, you're certainly welcome to do that. Probably the easiest way to do that is use the contact form on the Unsunday show. That's unsunday.com. 
There's a contact form there you can reach out to us if you want to. But just knowing this, that if you do reach out to us, we will read what you send, but we probably won't respond. Or I should say we may not respond. There's a good chance we won't reply. Yes. But we will read it, and we, we do appreciate it. Yeah, it's a, an emotionally draining time right now. And sometimes it feels so overwhelming that even answering a text is difficult. Exactly. But rest assured that we will read whatever you write and any encouragements appreciated. Your prayers, of course, are appreciated. Yeah. And when it's appropriate, we'll update you again on what's going on with us and uh, let you know any progress that's happening. Anything else you want to add? No. Just really appreciate everyone's prayer. Yeah, very much. Okay, well, we'll let you go. And uh, until next time, y'all take care. Bye. Thank you for joining us on the Unsunday Show. To be a part of this ongoing conversation, visit us online at unsunday.com. Thank you.